Have you ever wondered how a war machine capable of withstanding explosions, traversing any terrain and firing accurately from miles away is built? Tanks are the ultimate symbol of land power, combining engineering, brute force and cutting-edge technology. On this tour, we'll enter the world's largest tank factory to discover, step by step, how these combat-ready steel behemoths are created. Creating a tank isn't simply about manufacturing an armoured vehicle, it's about designing a combat platform that combines mobility, firepower, extreme durability and advanced technology. Its development involves coordinated work between mechanical engineers, weapons specialists, military strategists and defence systems technicians. In high security design rooms, specialised computer programmes are used to model the machine down to the smallest detail. Critical issues are defined there. The type of ballistic steel that will form the armour, the power and characteristics of the engine, the suspension system that will support its weight and the main armament it will carry. This initial process is exhaustive and can take more than a year. It's not uncommon for the development and manufacturing cost of a single unit to easily exceed several million dollars. Once the concept is approved, the plans are digitised and transformed into highly accurate three-dimensional models. These virtual models allow for advanced simulation testing, projectile impacts, close-range explosions, chassis deformations, and even the vehicle's behavior in the face of mines or air attacks are reproduced. If the virtual tank fails these tests, the design is adjusted until it meets the requirements. Only when the simulations confirm the project's viability is physical construction authorized. Tank manufacturing begins with the arrival at the plant of huge shipments of ultra-high-strength materials. Heavy-duty trucks transport ballistic steel, special alloys and components that will withstand not only direct impacts but also extreme temperatures and high pressures. These metal blocks are placed in industrial furnaces that reach temperatures exceeding 10,000 degrees Celsius. There, the metal melts until it reaches a molten state. It is then carefully poured into high-precision moulds that will shape the main parts, the barrel, chassis, armour plates and internal mounts for the engine and transmission systems. Once the metal has solidified, the parts are passed through CNC machining centres where computer-controlled machines cut, drill and fit them with millimetre precision. The barrel, for example, is drilled using high-power laser technology to ensure perfect calibre and flawless alignment. The chassis is reinforced with internal steel ribs, increasing its impact absorption capacity. Meanwhile, the tracks are assembled from hundreds of articulated plates that will allow the tank to move through sand, snow, mud or asphalt without difficulty. With the parts ready, the assembly phase begins. Industrial cranes and automated vehicles move each component to the production line. Here, in a perfectly organized sequence, highly trained operators and precision robotic arms work together to bring each part together. First, the undercarriage base is assembled, axles, sprockets and articulated tracks. The reinforced chassis, which will be the backbone of the tank, is placed on top of this structure. The internal compartments are also installed at this stage. The crew cabin, engine compartment, ammunition compartment and the basic electronic modules. Each weld is made using high-strength techniques, using armoured bolts that withstand extreme forces. The outer armour is applied piece by piece, forming a virtually impenetrable shell. Here, any mistake could mean the difference between life and death on the battlefield, so every joint is checked multiple times. This is where the tank transforms from an immobile steel colossus into a beast capable of traversing any terrain. It's at this stage that its heart is installed, a high-performance diesel engine that reaches up to 1,500 horsepower. This isn't just any engine. This engine is designed to move more than 60 tonnes with the same ease on a paved road as it is in the middle of dunes, thick mud, extreme slopes or rocky areas. Assembly takes place in specialised rooms where expert technicians work with precision cranes and hydraulic tools to place the engine in the rear compartment, a strategic position that balances its weight and protects it from enemy impacts. Once secured, a key phase begins connecting the transmission, which delivers power to the tracks, the turbochargers, which increase the engine's power and response, and the cooling system with radiators and fans capable of keeping the temperature under control, even during prolonged combat. Each connection is made following strict military protocols. There's no room for error. A misaligned coupling, a tiny leak, or an improperly tightened bolt can render the tank inoperable. Before being declared complete, 
the assembly undergoes dry runs. The engine starts, the transmission engages, the tracks rotate in a controlled manner, all under the watchful eye of engineers who monitor vibrations, pressure, temperature and mechanical response. If anything isn't perfect, the process is stopped and immediately corrected. At this point, the tank already has the strength to move, but it still needs to be equipped with what makes it a fearsome weapon, its firepower and defensive systems. With the structure and propulsion power now in place, it's time to equip the tank with its true purpose, firepower. This phase takes place in a specially designed armoured area for handling heavy weapons, where every movement is precisely calculated and adheres to strict safety protocols. The first element to be installed is the main combat module, the section where the gunner will be located and which will serve as the base for the cannon mount. This is no ordinary cannon. We are talking about a piece more than six meters long, made of treated steel and subjected to high precision laser drilling, ensuring perfect alignment and exceptional durability. Mounted on an advanced stabilization system, the cannon can fire with pinpoint accuracy even while the tank is moving at high speed or traversing uneven terrain. Its capacity allows it to launch armor-piercing and high-explosive shells more than four kilometers away, penetrating enemy armor or neutralizing fortifications. But the arsenal doesn't end there. Secondary weapons are integrated, offering tactical versatility, coaxial and anti-aircraft machine guns to confront infantry or low-altitude aerial threats, automatic grenade launchers useful against fortified positions and light vehicles, smoke launching systems which create opaque curtains to conceal strategic maneuvers or retreats. The entire weapon suite connects to an internal control center equipped with touch screens, optical sights and computer-aided aiming systems. From there, the crew can operate each weapon with speed, precision and coordination, ensuring the tank is ready to respond immediately to any threat on the battlefield. In this phase, the tank receives the suite of technologies that will allow it not only to attack, but also to protect itself against a wide variety of threats. Firepower alone does not guarantee survivability on the modern battlefield. Therefore, the integration of defensive and electronic systems is a fundamental step in transforming the vehicle into a highly autonomous and safe combat platform. Proximity radars are installed, capable of detecting objects or projectiles at short and medium ranges, alerting the crew within milliseconds. These radars work in conjunction with thermal sensors and high-definition external cameras, providing clear vision both day and night and in adverse weather conditions such as fog, heavy rain or sandstorms. The information captured by these devices is channeled into a computer-aided targeting system, which helps gunners accurately lock onto targets even if the tank is moving or the target is taking evasive maneuvers. In parallel, secure and encrypted communications are implemented, allowing for uninterrupted coordination of actions with other units, even if the enemy attempts to block or jam the signal. These systems use adaptive frequencies and military-grade encryption protocols, ensuring that sensitive information cannot be intercepted. The armor, already robust by design, is reinforced with reactive plates that, upon detecting an imminent projectile impact, generate a controlled explosion that dissipates some of the energy, reducing penetration. Added to this are active defense systems, which use sensors and countermeasures to intercept and neutralize missiles or rockets before they reach the structure. The final stage of tank manufacturing is, without a doubt, the most rigorous and decisive. It's not just about verifying that everything works, but also confirming that the machine is truly ready to operate in a real war environment, where every second and every decision can make the difference between accomplishing the mission or failing. The process begins in specialized testing grounds, facilities designed to recreate the most demanding conditions a tank could face. The vehicle undergoes extreme maneuvers, including top speed travel over uneven terrain, ascending and descending steep inclines, crossing deep trenches and prolonged travel over unstable surfaces such as thick mud or loose sand. Partial immersion in water is also performed, testing the water tightness of the structure and the operation of its systems under extremely humid conditions. The main armament is fired in multiple scenarios, at rest, on the move, and against fixed and moving targets. This allows for verification of both accuracy and the stabilization system's ability to absorb recoil without affecting aiming. In parallel, the armor undergoes real-world ballistic testing, receiving controlled impacts from armor-piercing and explosive projectiles to assess its resistance. During these tests, engineers and technicians record real-time data, 
temperature of critical components, fuel consumption, suspension response, engine performance, and the effectiveness of defensive systems. If any fault is detected, however minor, the tank returns to the workshop for adjustments or repairs before being retested. Only units that successfully pass all quality control criteria receive final certification and are delivered to the armed forces. The United States Army, for example, maintains more than 8,000 operational tanks in service, with a combined value exceeding $100 billion, an investment that reflects the level of rigor and perfection sought in each of these steel behemoths. These vehicles represent decades of advancements in engineering, materials and military technology. They are not simple machines, they are strategic platforms that combine mobility, firepower and survivability into a single package. Their presence on the battlefield is not only intimidating due to their size and power, but also directly influences the strategy and conduct of operations. Behind each unit are thousands of hours of work, an army of technicians and specialists, and a manufacturing process where precision and quality control allow for no margin of error. Each tank that leaves the production line is not just a finished product, but the result of a coordinated effort involving design, engineering, testing, and meticulous fine-tuning.